Hey folks, Evil Pajamas here to share a quick look at Card Pocalypse, a newly released game on Steam. Card Pocalypse features a gauntlet mode and a story mode, with gauntlet mode being consistent with a lot of features that you'd expect from most digital deck building games. Story mode, on the other hand, allows you to progress through the story and collect cards and then construct a deck, so it's more along what you'd consider along its lines of CCG type play. This title was developed by Gambernus, an uh, indie developer out of Dublin, Ireland. They uh, were the studio behind Guild of Dungeoneering, which uh, was a pretty popular and well-reviewed game on Steam. I uh, have not played it myself, so not able to comment um, on the game. The game was published by Versus Evil, and uh, the game that people are probably most familiar with that looks on their publishing uh, roster is Pillars of Eternity. A uh, quick note about this video, I won't be using a lot of pop-ups or anything here because it's a pretty new game, so I just want to make sure that people can actually take a look at the gameplay footage without me inserting a lot of, of, of pop-ups over the gameplay. Um, that said, if you could like and subscribe to the video if you found it informative, that would be great. I'll just be going over some of the highlights of the, the game features and what I think was done, uh, done well or could have done, been done better so far in what I've seen. So story mode, it has an actual story to it, which um, seems to be lacking in, in, in a, uh, just general deck building games. I, I mean, granted, you know, I like deck building games without the story, but I think, you know, this adds an actual story element. Haven't had enough time in to actually like get into how good the story is, but basically you play for sort of an androgynous looking um, uh, school age person. Um, I actually thought that the main character was male initially, even after they told me the name was Jess. But um, at later, it's told that the main character's name is Jessica. So I, I figured at that point is safe assumption that a female character. So Jessica is starting off at a new school and fortuitously uh, on the bus on the way there bumps into somebody that introduces uh, her to the Power Pets game. And it sort of kicks off from there. Um, as you uh, go through your day at school, you'll meet various people and play Power Pets, um, which is basically what the uh, Card Pocalypse game is. It's just a game of a series of Power Pets matches. But there is a map that you can walk around on and do quests, which I think is also cool. Uh, one thing I did notice that um, the town that this takes place in that Jess has moved to, I, I do feel that the parents there really do need to demand better dental insurance. I, I like the way the animations are done, but for some reason all the kids in this town, or at least the majority of them, have really terrible teeth. Um, I don't think I, I mentioned this is a, a single player game. I don't want to throw anybody off where, when I mentioned uh, the, like the CCG-ish kind of play style to the to the story mode uh, as i mentioned there is an overworld map that you can go around do quests on um, talk to people uh, and gather new cards for your collection uh, the i i haven't found anything in the environment where you can actually interact with the objects yet but again i haven't put in that much time so every deck in this game has a champion which is just sort of the main character that represents the character that can't die if you want to win the match. Um, in that sense, the, the champion actually almost has sort of like a Hearthstone-ish feel um, to it. It's not you, essentially. It's not supposed to represent you, but the champion is essentially the, the core mechanic for this represents your life total. Uh, and it, so around that, you'll summon minions, so that also gives it sort of a, a Hearthstone-y feel. Uh, the art style on the cards, uh, it's very fun. You know, it's an animated look, um, but it's sort of, uh, you know, cartoony, but like not kiddish cartoony. It's, it's sort of hard to explain. I don't know if you've, if you've ever played games like like uh, Munchkin or something, the physical card game, the Steve Jackson game. It's a little bit like, you know, that kind of art style where it's, you know, not for kids necessarily, but not inappropriate for kids. The decks you can build in this game feature uh, four factions and then neutral cards. Uh, another aspect that, once again, I sound like a broken record, that reminds me a little bit of Hearthstone. Um, the card mechanics, they have a lot of variety. It's not anything that I haven't seen before, but 
the sheer number of them that they incorporate into the cards, I think, um, is done really well. So I'll give you some quick examples of that. Um, a lot of these mechanics, like I've seen almost all of them at some point during Mag in Magic the Gathering type cards. So you have, um, you know, like Poisonous, uh, you have Morph, which was a mechanic in Magic the Gathering where you played the card in a flipped over state. Uh, you have uh, Swarm, which gives you plus one attack to the end of the turn for each minion played. Uh, Revenge, which is a trigger on death uh, type of effect. Stuns, which prevent um, attacks the next turn. Taunts, which pre uh, prevent you from attacking the champion. And um, stealth that prevents uh, minions from being attacked um, until you attack with it. Uh, the minions in this game have uh, what I'll just refer to as summoning sickness where they can't attack on the first turn they're played, but there's a charge ability. So if you're familiar with other CCGs or, or deck building games, you uh, probably have heard of a lot of these mechanics. Um, another interesting aspect is that the, the champions each have like a permanent like sort of retaliate aspect where every time they're attacked, they will automatically attack back and do damage to whatever's attacking them. Again, I've just started out in story mode, um, I, so I probably haven't unlocked all the features yet, but the, um, the game does also allow you to trade either cards or food with the NPCs um, as, you, as you go out throughout the map. Um, I think that that's, that's a fun aspect if you know, sort of, you know, makes sense with sort of like the, the, the school environment of, of, of trading cards. The um, thing I didn't really figure out is what they're requirements are for um, actually accepting your trade. That's about, that's about all the in info I can give you about story mode. I don't want to spoil too much of the, the story or anything. Um, I, I did come across a quest that was really painful for me because it seemed like what it, it wanted you to do was lose the quest, like lose on purpose, which was, it was really agonizing for me to just hope that that was, a, uh, that was going to, to result in something good. Um, I did notice, though, actually, uh, on the store, the store page of this game, that it does say that it's one of those games where you can't get everything and decisions do matter, and there are a series of options you're given when interacting with other characters um, in the game. So I, I think that that could be a, a fun little aspect of replayability in the story mode. Uh, now, quick on to the gauntlet mode, which is um, the aspect that I would probably end up getting the most enjoyment out of the game which is your uh, traditional deck building type game. Um, if you're familiar with sort of games like Slay the Spire, where you start out, you know, you start out with a small deck and you are able to customize that as you get wins and, the, and progress through various uh, difficulty stages. Um, so I threw out the gauntlet mode. I, I don't know if this is the case for everyone because I played through a little bit of the story mode, but there were four selectable factions and a lot of un- lockable factions and actually by factions i mean champions sorry there's only four factions but there was four selectable champions this champion I selected then had three decks but two of those were also locked so it looked like that there's a lot of fun unlocks i don't know if some of that is part of the downloadable content i noticed there was dlc available um on the the title page um so the basic format what i which i saw is that after you win a match you're able to draft cards um, selecting from three pairs. Uh, the only other game where I've seen forced pairing of draft selections like that is Legends of Ruin Terra, but I'll just say that I'm just undecided on whether or not that type of drafting is more or less balanced. I think it has a lot to do with how the, the pairing system itself is structured. There's uh, stickers that you could use to buff aspects of your cards. Um, so that is a lot like the leveling up mechanic of cards that you see in other digital deck building games. Now, the interesting thing that um, I saw, so instead of items, and these function similar to items, but it's more, not exactly, because there's more focus around a global change to the game. And that is that there is, there, after certain rounds, there is a rule change feature. And actually, this sort of reminds me of, actually, and the artwork actually on this game, it has sort of fun and colorful like that. It's a physical game called Flux where 
the players can actually change the rules of the game as the game progresses. So that's a, that's a really novel feature that I haven't seen before in a game, at least a digital deck building game. I obviously have seen it before in a game because I just said I saw it in Flux. But. So as the rounds progress, they'll get more difficult. I only ran the gauntlet through once before making this video because I just sort of wanted to get the gameplay video um, out as the game was, was fairly new. Um, but from what I saw, the enemies will get scaling card and bu energy buffs for, for their starter, their starting condition. So they'll start with more energy and draw more cards at the beginning of the game as you progress through the rounds. The other thing um, is that it looks like it has is sort of a level up and up card unlocking meter as you progress through. Uh, again, I don't know how, um, you know, how much that aspect drags on if it's like it's if it's very grindy or not um but it's it allows you to have a wider selection of of cards to select from as you progress through the gauntlet um so overall i think that this um you know it's it's on sale right now and i was really happy with the 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 price so far that i paid for the game i think i'll get at least that much value out of it um, so at the sale price, I, I, I would say that it's, it, you know, it's a good pickup. So um, thanks for sticking along to the vid with the video. Uh, if you liked, please click like down in the bottom right corner there. And if you would like to see more content like this, please hit subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.